There are millions of acres of opportunity out there. They belong to you. Every day, decisions are being made that affect your land, your water, your wildlife. You should know about them. This is your mountain. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Your Mountain Podcast. I am your host, David Wilms, and I've got with me, as always, not as always, but it's becoming more frequent that we're all three together. <laughs> Semi always. <laughs> Semi always. <laughs> Mike McGrady. What's up? Hey, Mike. Hey. How are you? Never been better. Yeah, good. Good. Um, Nephi, you're here too. Still here. In spirit. It's amazing that I haven't <laughs> and, quit yet. I know. You threatened to, and we're gonna. You one see, of these times, we're gonna hold you to this well, threat. We haven't had a fist fight, <laughs> although I've wanted to. Yeah. yeah so yeah. there's there've been some uh, some high adrenaline conversations off the air. That's why I put you guys on that side of the table. <laughs> don't break anything in my. I house. figured you're just practicing to be a judge someday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you set us yeah. set us up over here at council you know, table. I was I was uh, <clears throat> I was visiting with Kerry Jo Gray, Justice Gray, the Wyoming Supreme Court, the other day. Yeah. It was fantastic. Went up to the Supreme Court, sat down with her. She, you know, she used to be all of our boss. That's right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I was over there and uh, she said she was disappointed. She gets to talk to Dave and I quite frequently, but she's scared to talk to you because she's always worried that you're going to be trying a case in front of her and that she then wouldn't be able to treat it. Which is, then that's happened. And we don't talk that often. Probably not as much as you guys do. Yeah. No. <laughs> so you do. No. I want to go down a road here that we don't, we've never really been down before. Teeing off of what Nephi said mm -hmm. about how you might be in front of uh, Justice Gray, our former boss, and so she doesn't want to visit with you. Why would that be? <laughs> can, can we talk about what you do for a living? Uh, I'm an attorney. Well, we all know that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I practice in Wyoming, and she's a Supreme yeah. Court Justice in Wyoming. So... So no, are we, are you saying no? We can't talk about exactly what you do. Well, I think we'll talk about it more later. Yeah, yeah, people okay. can Google it; they can figure it out. Okay. Well, it was great. It was nice visiting with her, and yeah. I apologize if I may have told her things that I should not have <laughs> about right. you, Mike McGrady. Right. But hey, that's what I do. I just yeah. spill the beans. That's what <laughs> I do. You you manned up She's and called me, and I'm I just gonna, called her right I'm back. I'm going to tell you the yeah. truth. <laughs> you may not like it, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah. This is. This is a, a stamp it. This is for the podcast. You may not like what I'm going to tell you, but it's the truth. I, I ran into our other boss the other night. Um, which which one? The uh, the other chief of staff. Ooh, the other chief Mary of staff. Kay. Oh, yeah. Oh, there Policy you go. Director. Policy yeah. director for, for yeah. Governor Meade when we were working for him. And chief of staff at the end. Um, she uh, she was asking me if, if you two are still doing that podcast thing. Not you. Yeah. <laughs> she thought you were smart. She somehow no, doesn't really. And, and I think that's, um, I think a lot of people would wonder that because you just don't talk very much. <laughs> Not yeah. nearly enough. Yeah. I've been told that too. Yeah. So you need to up your game. Mm -hmm. So how many episodes ago, what episode is this going to be? I don't know. Like 87 87 or something? probably. Episode 15, we talked about something called the Land and Water Conservation Fund. We did. So if anybody wants to know actually more about that, because we're going to talk about it tonight, go back and listen to that. And but, actually, a lot's changed since then, too. Yeah, but the reason I bring that up is because so for people wondering why we like, why would we geek out about some stuff like this so much? So full disclosure, these things that we talk about on this podcast... You know, we don't represent the views of our offices when we're talking on this podcast necessarily. These are our own views, but we work on these issues on a day-to-day -day basis. All of us work in natural resource related, you know, and fields related to the things that we talk about on this podcast. And that's why we spend a ton of time studying this stuff. At the time with LWCF, one of the reasons that we knew so much about it was because of course, LWCF, the first time it lapsed, the governor of Wyoming, Governor Matt Mead, made a big push when he was with the National Governors Association to do a bridge reauthorization. And that's and and that work, the letters, the going to DC, that stuff, our staff, me, Dave, Mike, we all had 
input into that process, and we were all part of going with him. In fact, when he was recognized by TRCP, Theodore Roosevelt Conservation Partnership, with a Lifetime Achievement Award, the same night that Ranella got his award, mm -hmm. you and I were there in the audience because one of the things specifically was because of the work he'd done on the reauthorization of land and water conservation funds. So if you if you if you think we're full of it, when we talk about something like LWCF, we probably are. Yeah, I think largely that's fair full to say. of it. We're pretty full of it. Yeah, but we've spent a lot of time. <laughs> but we've filling. also studied it. That's yeah. why we're we're full because we're so full of yeah, all that the, information. Yeah, we are wearing boots because of all the BS in the room. But we've shoveled most of the BS ourselves. Yeah, that's a fact. There you go. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about we're, kind of an update. This, I mean, we did that almost. Well, it's probably been a year and a half ago that yeah. we did that episode. But it's become extremely impactful. And it's become, it has become impactful. Yeah. And there, there have been significant changes, and it's dominating the headlines right now. And we want to talk about, we're, you know, so first of all, it's been dominating the headlines, uh, and we're going to talk about that right up front. But I want to throw out, because of those conversations, actually, can I let give, me back up can one I give second. A metaphor? Can I give Go one, yeah, one yeah, thing yeah, yeah. really quick? We're going to spend... Let's just roadmap this out a little bit. We're going to talk about some of the the media hype around LWCF and the political hype around LWCF in the past week or two here, uh, and and you know going forward and why it's getting this attention and why it actually has a chance to move and pass. It, you know, it, it, when I say it, we're talking about permanently funding the Land and Water Conservation Fund. We'll talk about what that means. We're going to talk about what that means. But it's a really big deal to have a bill uh, that could pass. It's huge. It's huge. And I like the way you did that. Hmm. Uh, that you, Theoretically, you could have a, a big funding bill like this pass in an election year. And the reason why all arrows really point back to Montana huh. on yeah, this, right? This is, this is a, the metaphor I want to share. It's a hunting-related metaphor. Okay. When you go out to try and get that, you know, the big elk, the one that you've been, or the big muley that you've been watching. Because I was talking about elk, so we're talking about mule deer. There comes a time when you're, when preparation has to meet opportunity. And it's a, it's a moment that some might describe as luck or fortune, where all the work that's been done in the background in the past comes to a moment. And some unforeseen thing that you have no control over suddenly puts that buck in your crosshairs, and you have an opportunity to take a shot. And you may not know how all those fortunes came together, but tonight, we're going to try and explain it. Don't you feel like in the background, as you're describing that, there's like this you know, suspenseful guitar riff going on, something like that, um, you know, right before you're about to pull the trigger on that? Like, like I kind of feel like there's this guitar suspense. Riff? Well, or, or violin music. I want whatever. symphony. I'm, yeah, no, I'm well, thinking about when you're watching a hunting show, a lot of times it's like well. it's a guitar in the background, bow, giving you right before, bow, yeah, right before yeah. you pull the trigger, right? No, yeah. that's kind of what's, what's what's going on, you know, carrying that analogy out, right? All that's right. What, so there, we're going to talk about all the background that led to this this moment that happened a week ago, um, and you know, to, so we're going to tee that up. We're going to talk about the the politics of of why Montana is going to matter so much and why it why why a Senate race in Montana, and, and let me say this. And Colorado. And yeah. Colorado. Yeah. Well, mostly um, Montana. But so, uh, really, it's, yeah. it's really the Montana. The joke's good in Montana. Right. The joke, that's right. And because of this, I, I want to go out on a limb here. So we're going to have, um, there's going to be a contested race in Montana uh, in, the, in uh, the general election, which was unexpected a week ago. And now there's going to be this contested race. And I'm going to go out was on it, a limb. Was it unexpected a week ago? It was, actually. You think so? And we'll, yeah. we'll talk about that. It was definitely unexpected. Maybe two weeks ago, it's been it it, it, it kind of caught some people. Okay, by surprise. Yeah, go get anyway, to the punchline. So yeah, it's really delaying this. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to go out on a limb. And I'm going to make a bold prediction for 2020. I'm going to call the election right now for Montana. Mm -hmm. Let's hear it. All right. In November, somebody named Steve will be the next U.S. Senator from the state of Montana. All, All right. right. With that, let's, let's talk about the Lana Water Conservation Fund. Throwing that marker down right now. All right. Hey, if, hey, what so. if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? Now, here's what we're going to do. That'd be a shocker. Now, everybody, <laughs> before you turn this off now because of our bad jokes, this has everything to do with the reason that Land and Water Conservation Fund is has the, the opportunity at this moment in time 
to for for this permanent funding solution. It has everything to do with it. Yep. And, and we'll for those that. of you who uh, we're going to explain to you how you know how politics plays into natural resource policy. Go ahead. Okay. So before we get into that, for those of you that haven't heard our prior episode, which was what episode fifteen, I think is what we said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, also covered a little bit on. 34. Okay. But fi- 15 was the, 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 the we dissected it. We're going to rehash some old ground here. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about, so what is the Land and Water Conservation Fund? You know, give a little bit of history of that. Talk about what it is, what it can do. Uh, because it, from where I sit, and I, I imagine you two have the same perspective, correct me if you don't, but I think to some extent, the Land and Water Conservation Fund is one of the most... Uh, critically important yet, yet woefully misunderstood uh, conservation laws out there. There are so many people that have not heard of it at all or kind of know what it is, but you know, maybe have heard of it, don't really know what it is. And it's really the people that are immersed in it on a day-to-day basis that have been pushing uh, this act to, to be, uh, like you were saying, Nephi, to have that that bridge uh, built for, you know, when it expired to have a bridge built to, to get to um, permanent reauthorization. And then that has led to discussions about permanent funding. But I, I want to talk about this because we're talking about a big dollar amount and a very impactful law that maybe not as many people as, sh- as should know what it does. Uh, so first of all, Land and Water Conservation Fund Act of 1965. The whole purpose of it uh, was to help preserve, develop, and ensure access to outdoor recreation facilities and ultimately strengthen the health of U.S. citizens. So it was a... Outdoor recreation out- facilities and strengthen the health. Yep. yep. Get people outside okay. and create opportunities to get people outside. Okay. Right? So it's the... And with that act, there was a law or the law created the Land and Water Conservation Fund in the U.S. Treasury and as a and created a funding source. So the and we'll talk about that. Land and Water Conservation Fund is used for three general purposes. One is land acquisition for outdoor recreation by the Forest Service, National Park Service, Fish and Wildlife Service, and the BLM, Bureau of Land Management. Two is it provides financial assistance to states. So states can put in proposals for, for programs and get and parks and yes. you know all sorts of things, and, and, but it can be other things as well. Absolutely, and, and it authorizes a matching grant program to assist states. So s- states have to pony up some money, but this money is this program is there to give them matching funds to be able to do recreational planning, acquiring yep. recreational lands and waters, developing outdoor recreational facilities. Yep, and they right. often say there's a LWCF project in every county in America, and if you which if, is not true. But most a lot counties, a lot, a lot of people say that in those, but there, there are it's land, close. they're in every state. Yes. And, but, sure. and the reason that they say that, you know, when you go look around and you're wondering, well, if you're, if you're a, you know, a hunter and it's like, well, where's my piece of access? Well, in a lot of these, it literally is ballparks and parks and swimming pools and, yeah, know, and, and we'll give community some, recreation. we're going to give some very specific, I want to give okay, go ahead. four or five very specific examples Perfect. of where this money goes, right? To give you an idea. But here's the third purpose. So those are the, the first two purposes, the third one, and this started in 1998. Uh, and it was used to fund other federal programs that had natural resource related purposes, like the Forest Legacy Program in the Forest Service and grants under the Cooperative Endangered Species Conservation Fund in the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So it can actually provide supplemental funding to other agencies, programs within other federal agencies for mm-hmm. conservation-related activities. And there was a beef with this. I don't know if you're going to talk about this. Should I wait on the beef between states and federal? Um, yeah, we'll get to that. Okay, go ahead. You're, you're talking about the, yep. the split? Yep. Yeah, we're going to get to that, right? Okay, so so those are the purposes. Now, how much money are we talking about? You know this one. 900. Yeah, 900 what? <laughs> Nine hundred million. million, yeah, not nine hundred million, yeah. Yeah. not billions of the billion, billion, but million. But million. With the... So the fund is authorized to accrue nine hundred million dollars annually from several different sources, but most of the money is derived from oil and gas leasing in the outer continental shelf. Yep. And when I say most, I mean um, give you just lay it out there. Uh, over the history of the act, almost $41 billion in revenues has accrued through LWCF. And of that, 
38.8 billion of it comes from the Outer Continental Shelf receipts. So there are a few other places. You know, so what does that mean? Outer Continental Shelf. Tell people what that uh, is. Offshore oil and gas leasing. So it's royalties off of the development of oil and gas offshore. I think it's also from uh, uh, from leasing uh, offshore. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's um, just yeah. it's, it's royalties. It's, it's, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's oil and gas. Yes, that's what right. funds it. Receipts. That's what funds yep. it. Me driving my Toyota Tundra too fast. Um, Hauling too lifted. much. And, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. My Into f- the wind. Yep. Both directions. Because I live in Wyoming. Wyoming. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always driving into yeah. the wind. Yeah. So so if forty billion has gone into the fund since it was established. Yeah. This is a good one where you're how, going. How much has it been appropriated by Congress? Yeah, so that's the second piece of it. Is Just it, because the money goes in, right. right? Doesn't mean it comes back doesn't out. Doesn't mean it comes back out. That's right? the magic of the so budget. So that's that's and that's the magic of this bill, not just the budget. That's the magic of the way this bill was constructed, is it it said the nine hundred million can accrue but can only be spent if it's appropriated by Congress. And so less than half of that 40.9 billion has been appropriated. I think it's 18.9 billion. Okay. Um, is that consistent with what that, you think? What I'm looking at right now. Yeah. 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 Um, it has been. Thank you, counselor. That's, that's been appropriated, so, um, which means 22 billion in the, is, you know, you hear this sometimes we should dispel this thing. So 22 billion still in the fund, right? That doesn't mean that there's $22 billion there available to be used for LWCF because it just hasn't been, Mm -hmm. that money has been appropriated for other purposes uh, over the years, right? I mean, you'd know this better, Mike, having spent time on the Hill and maybe can explain the nuances. Uh, I think you've done that in the past, if you don't mind doing it. Yeah, well, I know we have had a couple of um, episodes already covered, but essentially... There's there's money in the fund, and then there's money that gets appropriated, and the rest can somehow wind its way out the back door and, and work for other things. Into yeah. other things. Yeah. Building it, important... Uh, so the, the point is yeah. that, that just because $22 billion of it went into the fund doesn't mean there's $22 billion there. There's not, it's not just waiting, waiting to, be to be spent on all these LWCF no. projects. Yeah. So right, it would yeah. be great, but we can't just cash it out right it's now. It's not like, like your savings account just sitting yeah, there just waiting. back up the Brinks right. truck and then go buy it. Right, room. yeah. Right. Well, so, so yeah, out of the Buy eight, Canada. The we eight. should buy Canada, by the way. That would be awesome. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Well, they, they do produce a lot of oil up there, so there'd be some good revenues. But So out of the 18.4.9, whatever you want to say, billion mm-hmm. that's been appropriated, my understanding is about 11.2 has gone towards federal land acquisition, and then about 4.7 billion has gone for state grants or national park grants. Yeah, and, I, and, and <clears throat> I'll even break that down a little bit more in a percentage because we're going to talk percentages here this in a second. We're going to talk about the beef. Yeah, because uh, yeah, w- w- yes, we will. We're gonna get to. The, we're almost to the beef. Okay, I think. hurry almost up. Almost to the beef. Let's get to the beef. Um, I like, the, <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, so I did want to. I did want to also mention historically, the even though the fund is authorized for up to nine hundred million dollars, and this is an important piece for when we get to the the political conversation we're gonna have. Only twice in its history has it actually been funded by Congress at that nine hundred million dollar amount. Uh, once it actually exceeded that $900 million, uh, 2001, it actually was closer to a billion dollars, uh, but it's only twice been fully funded, right? And on average, uh, you're, you know, it, it's typically coming in at, you know, about half of that. Uh, I mean, it's kind of in that range. So, mm-hmm. so we're actually talking about it's, even though it has a $900 million, authorization it's be the appropriations typically are coming in several hundred million dollars under that and that's important to know for our future the yeah. political conversation that we're going to talk about here yeah right? so, okay. you know, so think about it bit. this way there's there's a fund out there so like your savings account and um your bank is saying that you can transfer up to 900 of, you know, whatever, uh, a billion of that, or 900 million of that out of your savings. Man, I wish I had your savings account, right? Into your checking account, right? <laughs> yeah. checking account well, for this program. Yeah. No, Let's just, go with $900. So, <laughs> so there's a, a boatload of money in the savings, and there's a uh, only so much can be transferred from the savings into the checking for spending. That's and right. there has to be an authorization or appropriation to do that. You have to, That's the process you of taking it. You need a co-signer. You have to, to greenlight yeah. the money moving over. Right. And so, but and somebody so else rated the savings account. So while there's like a, a large number and you think, okay, maybe I could spend $40 billion or whatever, there is a limit, and like kind of an annual type of limit 
of what can go over. And Congress doesn't fully say you get to do all 900 million. They usually say you get to transfer 400 million. And they'll identify the projects they want to do it, for, you know, yeah, what they want right. to use it for. And in 2000, for fiscal year 2019, uh, the most recent information we have, that uh, authorization, that transfer from the savings to the checking account for spending mm-hmm. was uh, just over $506 million. Yeah, yep. yeah I just, we, we, we used like, we used uh, a fund, we used uh, transfer, we used appropriation, we used the term, uh, we had a couple other words, and I just right. thought we'd no, that's conceptualize a good, that's it. That's a so. good, good analogy. Yeah. And so just, now, just it, know that... It's worth saying that er, this is going to come into play in a little while here, that this year, when the president's budget came out, he suggested we don't push any money into that. No, checking. that's not true. Oh, what did he say? So I think it was, um, give me one second to okay. confirm, it was either 14 or 15 million, which was actually almost double what he proposed last year. So let's his, just say it's not a, like, don't be too generous. <laughs> but I, but yeah. that's something I wanted to talk about when we get to the politics of this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so just, so that was so we'll, proposed let's, months, let's, several months ago. Right. Yeah. Let's placeholder actually, that a month piece. Ago. Yeah, let's do a placeholder on that. Okay. Because yeah. I think that fits really well into our discussion I'm about just, the politics piece. I'm just saying you, that because we're on the, the we're talking about the checking account now. So yeah, I'm sure. No, no, and, and, and while you're looking that up, just the listeners should know that we did have uh, the chairman of the budget committee and the Senate budget committee on one of our episodes, Senator Enzi, and he walked us through the budgeting process, talking about how the president puts a budget together, Congress puts a budget together. Never in your life did you think you ever needed to know that information. However, it ties into this exact subject we're talking about. It does. And and I'll throw it out here since you brought it up about the, the president's budget. So mm-hmm. for this year, he proposed $15 million for the LWCF program, yeah. for, the, for the new budget. So but right, if you Dave. go back to that... You're right, Dave. Huh? It wasn't nothing. <laughs> huh? I, you're, I said, you're right. It wasn't nothing. <laughs> right. It was 2% of the full <laughs> yeah. authorization. Congratulations, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> I, no, but that's... In, it, you know, no, you win. It's, yeah. <laughs> we got that on, re- on record. Yeah. 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 I, uh, go ahead. It was more than zero. All right. It's more, it's more yeah. than zero. We'll, but we're going to come back to that because it's an important point to talk about when we yes, get to politics is. of this. Right. Um, okay. So <clears throat> we've talked about where the money comes from, how much money there is. I wanted to give you, backing up to um, Mike, you had, you had mentioned how that $18.9 billion has been allocated over mm-hmm. the over the history, and you gave the numbers for federal land acquisition state grant programs. Right. Um, I want to put that in percentage terms because this is something I know Nephi wants to talk about. Um, so 60% of the, the money appropriated in the history of the program has gone to federal land acquisition. 25% has gone to state grant program, the state grant program. And then uh, the remainder goes to other purposes, Yes. Um, which typically are on you know, things like we mentioned, how they can fund other federal programs. U.S. Forest Service will decide the Forest Legacy Act, for example, exactly. comes out of that 14%. Exactly. And so what you've seen then is, so states, this was the beef. When, when, the, when, the, when the Land and Water Conservation Fund was originally established, 60% of the money was supposed to go to? States. 40% to? Federal. What's, right. what, but what has been the actual outcome over time? Flipped. It's been more than flipped. Yeah, it's more more than flipped. And and so you're talking about the original sixty, the original act, yes. right? So um, sixty forty, and then it was amended in 1976 to and, allow for. And in, in 1976, it again though it said it changed it to being a firm sixty forty to saying not less than forty percent for for, or for federal purposes. That's right, and not less for uh, than. Oh, but it, but I, I take that back. Not less than 40% for, for the federal, federal purposes, but it removed the text specifying That's the right. 60% for state purposes. That's right. But in conference committee in that, in that, um, amended act, they, they state that the appropriations should generally reflect that 60, 40 allocation, but they said we needed to do something different because states were, weren't spending at all. Or, or yeah, because they didn't have you know the argument was they didn't have the resources to to, spend to make the matches to spend yeah. it all. And so, this and so we big, should be able to use it for we should be able to use it for land acquisition for, for land the acquisition government. for the federal government. And this has been a huge so for the the folks who want to know who could because we all agree at this table, LWCF is pretty awesome. Everybody generally does. Mm-hmm. Now we've had in our last in our in episode fifteen we talk about one of the problems with the concept of a never ending pot of money to always buy land for the federal government becomes problematic when you run out of lands to buy. Now, well, in addition to trying to keep them up, 
Yes. Now, so we talk a little bit about that, but all of us agree LWCF is awesome. So what? So what was the? What's the beef here with people that don't like LWCF? It is that. Is this? It is this idea that you've had this pot of money, and the intent of the pot of money has been to increase these recreational opportunities around communities. Mm-hmm. So for people to be able to get out and enjoy and be healthy and things like that. Yeah. But when you're using all that money to do nothing but purchase in holdings, they're saying, well, hey, what's the point? Yeah, and but to be fair. Yep. Uh, that, yeah, and we we saw how the how it's flipped, but there have still been f- over forty two thousand grants in the yep. history of the program but that have gone. This. It, I mean, it's had a forty two thousand grants under the state pro um, state grant program that have gone back to on the ground projects. Yet, it's only you know, what could that forty two thousand have been if if it was getting the full. 60% yes. as opposed to the 25%. But here's, and here's one of the challenges, with, and this one states, so when Governor Meade went and with Governor Brown from California and, and, and pushed to have this program reauthorized, they asked for it to come closer to the 50-50 split, closer to the original intent, and here's why. In Wyoming, 13% of the money that had ever come in from, you know, it was getting 13% of the LD, LWCF funding was going stateside. So... Now, the federal agencies always, they took that grant piece and they wanted to say that state side because it goes out to projects in different states. But states weren't deciding where that money went. It never went to the state program. The problem with that is in Wyoming, there wasn't enough money coming in to the program to pay for the people to run the program. So are you saying, just so we're clear, the way the state money was working is a community would apply to the National Park Service who... Yes, the National Park Service operates the grant program, right? And then it would be the Park Service that would make the de- a, a determination on the grant, and but they'd actually, you know, I mean, I'd be clearer. I, I'm be not, clearer on the federal on the grant po- portion. Yeah, no, be be clearer on the piece that uh, I'm, I'm, I want to make the sure 13%? that we percent. Yeah, so okay. that we understand. So the thirteen percent are that. are are projects that are proposed for their their they are the state is stumping for these projects, and it's so, a it's so a, the states it's the state that wants these projects. Yes, and the okay. state can count on X amount of dollars coming into the state for these projects. These aren't they're not competitive because there's a formula funding requirement that this LWCF money is a certain amount of money is going to go out to back, every state. Stop there for one second. Yes. So the state program has there's two different pots of money in the state program because you said competitive non competitive. Okay, trying to dive into this and explain it. So when you look at that allocation and the pots of money, what they look like, as you noted, about 60% of the money was spent, is, it's federal. It's aimed at the, it has been aimed at the federal government. Now, that wasn't the original intent, but that's how it was. So that money is getting spent for things like, that's, that's federal land acquisition. That is what that money is going towards. You have 25% of the money over time has been spent by states. Last year in Wyoming, that was 13%. So what's the remaining percentage? This kind of nebulous money that's floating out there that if you talk to the federal government, they're saying, well, that's stateside money. And they continually say that. And that's how they make it look like it's been close to 50-50. And states, if you ask state recreation departments, state departments of natural resources, whoever, they're going to say, no, no, that was federal spending. And here's, and here's why both sides say that. And they're both kind of telling the truth. Because what happens is that pot of money stays in D.C. And then an individual entity within states have to compete with one another for that money. So that leftover money, for example, Montana had a huge forest legacy program project up in Montana where they had all this extra money rolling around up in D.C. Well, that money Montana puts in, in an application and says, we want that money to do a project here in Montana. So Montana is going to get a giant slug of money from DC where the, where that project, the forest service is going to decide Montana gets that money to spend on that project. The forest service is saying when they count that up, when they account for it, they're saying, Oh, that's state money. Well, Wyoming or Montana would say, no, no, that was federal money that we were able to compete for in a grant. So Montana can't plan on having that money every year. Wyoming can't plan on having that money every year. They have to go beg for it. They have to ask for it. And what states have been saying over time is we shouldn't have to beg for that money. We should be able to count on having 50% kicked out to us so that we can run our programs. And if you don't give us enough money to run our programs, for example, in Wyoming, every LWCF project that you do nationwide, you can't just build a project and walk away from it. 
you actually have to go back and check on it and upkeep the project. It's a requirement of the program. So you can't just give somebody money, build a ballpark, and walk away from the ballpark. You have to send staff out there every year to make sure that the ballpark's all good. The problem with that is if you don't get enough money to run your program, pretty soon you don't have enough money to do anything new. Or you're using your budget that you would be doing for something else in order to do upkeep, in order to do record keeping, in order to, to do to follow up on your LWCF. And that's why you had this big fight that went on on you know over you know, federal side, state side, over where the money was going to go. And un it's unfortunate for the program, right? Because everybody agrees this is a great program. The problem was who gets to decide how to spend the money? Well, and then the other, so that's all really helpful. So I uh, appreciate that. The other part that I think there's been some fights is, so that's the state side. Then the federal side, um, there's been some disagreement over how to use that federal money. So the historically the federal dollars have been used for land acquisitions and there, and I think one of you noted uh, that there's some concern about uh, you know, acquiring land until there's no land to acquire. But, but the other thing is just, just this idea there, there's a cohort of people that don't like the idea of enlarging the federal estate. Uh, and so, mm -hmm. you know, they have no problem on the flip side. They have, no problem with those federal dollars being used to create um, access through the use of easements or other types of programs that aren't fee acquisition. And the argument is that theoretically, if you're, if you're doing easements, you can stretch those dollars farther and that you can actually open up a lot more land. And you know, we had um, Joel Webster from Theodore Rose Roosevelt Conservation Partnership on talking about the report they did on, on – um, federal public lands that are uh, inaccessible by way of uh, permanent access, yep. guaranteed, legally guaranteed permanent access, and, and that LWCF could be a great way, the federal side could be a great way um, to open that up, right? So there's, well, those have been a couple of the de That's one of the cool things the about the permanent reauthorization is now for the first time, a percentage of LD, LWCF has to be used for access. That did not exist before. So while it was a tool prior to the permanent reauthorization where it could have been used for, there was not a requirement that it be used for it. And that permanent reauthorization you talk about happened in 2019. That's right. Uh, so in 2019, uh, Congress uh, permanently reauthorized the Land and Water Conservation Fund. So it is, it is there, and it's always, and it, it so it's there. Forever so the until con the fund exists, yeah. and it still has the cap of nine hundred million dollars. They actually changed the—I believe they changed the allocation um, to uh, to forty percent to be used for federal, not less than forty percent for federal purposes, not less than forty percent for financial assistance to the states. So they yep. tried to get back to more of that fifty-fifty. Yep, and they left the twenty percent basically floating. Right. So right. yeah, and that's exactly that's exactly what they tried to do. They tried to kind of split the baby, and I think they did a really good job. Um, but of course, the thing that happened, uh, and well, and before we go to the thing that happened, I want to give you, a, and I said I'd do this. I want to give you a, a few examples of some LWCF type of projects, and I'm going to give you a, a few examples on the federal side, um, and a few examples on the state side, and some partnerships. I'm going to give you and. This will be a little, some of this will be a little unfair. So call me on it if you think it's too unfair. All right. But I want to. I'm going to make, make oh, my cast through. I want to talk the, about the impactful. <laughs> my, my cast is the My cast the seven Mike, Mike is the judge. Fighting. So one, if, if, and I'm going to use a Wyoming example to start with and then we'll spread out from there. All right. Grand Teton National Park. In Grand Teton National Park, there were two inholdings, uh, state sections and neither of land. neither of them to me. They belong to the state of Wyoming, granted on statehood, section 13 and 36, that, that all states got as yes. school trust land. There were two sections in Grand Teton National Park. One of these was known as an Anna, the Antelope Flats section. Mm -hmm. And for years, there was consternation between the state and the National Park Service about this land. And there was fear that the state of Wyoming would try and monetize it by you know, doing things like building condos or I whatever. Suggested, I suggested a casino, <laughs> but nobody bought in. Um, anyway, you know, when, when we're talking about the, if, if you want to talk about a good purpose for a land acquisition 
part of the Land and Water Conservation Fund for a federal acquisition. This was a federal acquisition piece, but it was really transferring state land to the federal government. Uh, and it, it used $23 million in Land and Water Conservation Fund and matched that with private donors to raise the $46 million necessary. That's right, $46 million for 640 acres. But it made sure that this piece of property that happened to be completely located within the boundaries of Grand Teton National Park became part of Grand Teton, the federal estate in in the National Park Service mm-hmm. and part of Grand Teton National Park. So there wouldn't be any fear that the state would do something nefarious. And I'm using those air quotes because I don't think the state really ever had any intent of doing anything but grazing a few cows on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were constitutionally obligated, the state was, to make as much money as possible off of this. And I'd say pulling in $46 million <laughs> for the land was, it was a win-win for the public. Casino would have been the, better. For the state. And maybe a casino would have been better. <laughs> uh, but that's one example of an LWCF project. Uh, there are other examples, like in Montana, it was used uh, to open up 50, 59 miles of uh, the Smith River in Montana uh, for, for by creating a launch point, uh, open up 59 miles of the river for floating. Uh, it's been used to establish... Um, uh, national uh expand uh a national wildlife refuge in Colorado. So those are some of the federal purposes. Mm-hmm. Um but there are there are a bunch of uh of state purposes as well. And I'll give you just a, a couple examples. In Washington DC, within the city, uh it was it, it was for Mitchell Park Playground. Fifty grand of funding assistance to develop a playground in an area uh that they wanted to to revitalize and get kids outside. And, uh, and so it can be used for playgrounds. I mean, the, the basic, you know, they're, they're, they're in Illinois, um, a family sports park, um, it, which $750,000 of assistance uh, to create uh, an outdoor park with soccer fields and baseball fields and walking paths, right? And there are examples of these types of programs all over the country. It basically, it, if you're in a, state or local government and you want a playground or a ball field or a swimming pool, something that doesn't have a roof over it. It's an outdoor, it's an rec, outdoor rec fund, program. but yeah. it can also be used for the states can want to create access for fishing or create yeah. access. Other so it can be outdoor rec. Other outdoor rec. The sky's yeah. the limit with yeah. what it can be used for. And I think that that's what the kind of the beef was with people when they're talking about this is like, you know, when you're talking about where you're going to spend this money, if you're actually going to, this was part of the argument with states and the federal government is if you're talking about where, what's going to benefit those, the American citizens, is it going to be, you know, if it's just an inholding in T- Grand Teton National Park, if that's what you spent all your money on, $46 million on that, why didn't you spend that on you know, playgrounds in Chicago? Yeah, 23 of the and, LWCF, yeah. but you're right. I mean, that, it's, that's the, it's the prioritization, how yeah, to use and, it. And, and it's fair. I mean, it's fair to have that discussion. But the point is, it's open to everything. You know, everything's on the table. Um, and, and the way and, to do it and right some is projects to let it do are, everything. And one of the points I was pointing out is some of the projects can be pretty small. $50,000, yeah. might be $10,000, all the way up to these gigantic projects, like yes. $23 million for, for the land acquisition, and everything in between. Right? So the, I just wanted to give some very tangible examples of, of how that money has been used in different places around yeah. the country. And you can find a lot more. Yeah. And when um, people talk about there's one in, you know, I said every county, it's not every county, but yeah. one, you but know, every state for sure. In, in, and Puerto in, Rico. In most large communities and many small ones. Yeah. I, I think mean, in Colorado, all but one county has received LWCF funds, for example. It's tough to find a place that hasn't. It can, yeah, it can't. There, it, it's it, tough. I mean, the money's, when, when, you, when you've had 42,000 grants so, across the so country. So why wouldn't, so here's, I mean, this needs to be touched on now, and hopefully we're, you know, kind of winding it up. So LWCF, we know that we reauthorized it, but again, the funding, people weren't putting, the, the money wasn't always coming in. Mm-hmm. You ready to go to funding? Yeah, that's a, so I think that's the perfect place to go. Let, we can start getting to the, the politics of today. So we have the bill last year that permanently reauthorized it. So we at least now, no, Land and Water Conservation Fund is always going to be there, but it's still going to be subject so, to the appropriate yeah. approach creation decisions of Congress. So reauthorization meant, or permanent reauthorization meant, rather than, well, so it's basically there. It's going to be right. there. It's the ours. The program exists. The program's we, not we, going away. We the bought, fund we bought is the there. book instead of having to go to the library and renew 
every so often. Every five years or whatever. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Uh, so it's it's been reauthorized. We know we have it. But then the next question that inevitably follows is, how much how, money is going to go into the checking do we, account? How do we fill this checking account? How do we ensure that all of these valuable programs across the country can be funded? Uh, and when you have, you know, some years, you know, Congress might appropriate a hundred million, and yeah. some years nine hundred million. There's no rhyme or reason, no predictability to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and there, so there are folks saying this is this program is too invaluable for for access for protecting habitat. Yeah. So um, people shifted gears basically from arguing for like, hey, don't kill the program. They, we got that done. And now then people, the gears got shifted by a whole bunch of organizations to now fund it. Right. So we went now from fund permanent authorization to permanent funding. Funding. And right. that's why a lot of people, it's, you know, they miss that there's there, that, that tie-in. So yes, we've done the first part, but now the question is, I guess, permanent funding. What we're asking for is rather than having to have Mike and his co-signer okay the money moving from savings into the checking account, we want an auto withdrawal. We, we basically we want the money moving straight over. We, we basically want this to be an entitlement program like Social Security and <laughs> Medicare. Yeah, which is why a lot of people opposed and permanent reauthorization, right? They because wanted, they knew that the slippery that slope was, was the next yeah, discussion. permanent funding. Right. And, yep. the, yeah. and to be fair, let, and to tee it up here, to be fair, we should talk about the, the criticisms of permanent funding. Uh, and, and you know, we talked about where those revenue sources come from right now and how the... Uh, almost all of it is coming from this offshore oil and gas development. Mm-hmm. Well, if you don't use oil and gas anymore, if we go 100% electric, how do you pay you for just the lost fund? It. Right? How do you how do you guarantee now, that there's going to be money? My tundra, yeah. there will <laughs> but, be something going to the fund. <laughs> but how do you guarantee that a an annual 900 million dollars in the inevitable event that offshore oil and gas production decreases mm-hmm. over time. And that has been, that's been one of the concerns is, you know, permanent means permanent, mm-hmm. you know, and if you're going to permanently reauthorize something, you should be able to, you should be able to identify a permanent source of funding for that. Uh, and, and so that now leads into, that, I mean, that's one of the crux of the current debate. I, I would say, because you know, we're going to talk about the bills that are out there, and you're going to hear how the bills are overwhelmingly, when you go through the co-sponsor list, they're overwhelmingly dominated by Democrats with, with a handful of Republican co-sponsors. And it's not because Republicans don't like the program. It's because Republicans want to know, how are we going to pay for this? Mm-hmm. Oh, Dave, that's so biased. You're such a hack. <laughs> that is so predictably Republican of you to say that. The, just, but Dave's not particularly Republican. I am particularly Republican. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, just saying you're partially biased. <laughs> no, like that's the I'm reality of it. Laying people, out the that, reality. It's, part of, it's one of the arguments. Yeah, we, it's the argument is okay. Okay, how are we going to pay for it? But let's move that to. I mean, honestly. But what we what we've learned about what's going to happen in twenty years? Fine. What we've learned now, in the past week, is it doesn't matter how we're going to pay for it. We're but we're going to figure. We're going to do it. You know why we're going to do, do it. it? Tell us why. Because, um, even though be, because Senator Danes and Senator Gardner, Steve Danes, up, Senator Steve, Steve Danes, Danes of Montana, one of the two Steves that's going to be the next senator. <laughs> we'll of Montana. talk about that in a second. Um, and keep, Senator Cory Gardner. Republican from Colorado. Forwarded a bill to permanently fund. Now, here's how it would permanently fund it. Uh, maybe we don't need to talk about that. But they, for, they, 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 basically, they basically didn't forward it an idea. Of, and not just them. Now, this you know, bill was introduced. This is, bill's got a lot of... It, it, it was introduced some time ago. By, wasn't it Ma- Manchin? Manchin from what, it, was, exactly. it was Manchin and, uh, it, from West Virginia. Yes. Democrat from West Virginia. So there's a lot of people on this bill... Saying, hey, let's let's permanently let's permanently fund it, and the way we're going to do fifty nine co sponsors on the Senate side. So the, right what's going to happen is the money's going to automatically go. That's, yeah, that's from, really good. It's that's pretty impressive, right? So when that when one that, shy of passing, when that money <laughs> dumps into the account, like it's been dumping in forever, no longer do you have to ask for it to get appropriated. It's just going to move over unless they stop it. So now instead of an automatic, instead of having to talk about it before it goes, it's you got to talk about it to stop it. Right, which yeah. that creates a. Uh, political lever. I mean, it's going to be hard to, to get 
to come in and say, stop it, stop it. Right. Yes. Because it's extremely popular. Yeah, exactly. But in the future, as you said, Dave, in the future, someday, if, you know, nobody uses petrol anymore and like, okay, fine. You know, you've, you've got a mechanism there at work to stop that if you had to. Yeah. They're either going to have to stop it or they're going to have to find a new funding, find source. funding from other places and yep. make cuts in the budget. And mm -hmm. we know that the budget hasn't been cut in decades. Yeah. And, and when, D <laughs> now, but when Danes and Gardner got behind this bill, something very interesting happened. Well, so did the president. Well, hang on. Let's back up just a little bit because they've both been behind this bill f for a year. Okay. So, you know, politically speaking, um, <clears throat> you know, they've been behind this for a long time. So, and I'll give you an example. So, Corey Gardner of Colorado co-sponsored this April 9th of 2019. And Danes? And um, Danes, you're going to have to give me just one second. I can pull that up too. Uh, Danes, same day. Yep. 2019. Co-sponsored it 2019. So, so they've, what changed? they've been on this. So, so let's talk so let's about, talk what, about changed. what changed. What changed the last two weeks <laughs> and what changed is when so all of you were listening to this. Well, before... Before you do that, no, let, I want to do it. So no, bad. you're gonna. I'll let you do it because okay. I know you want to do it so bad. Um, but let's back up and do the national picture. Okay. So we're in. In case anybody's missed it, <laughs> we're right in the midst of an election year. Po political wonks can now get excited. Where the <laughs> yeah, policy yeah. wonks can now turn off the podcast. Yeah. And just to be clear, you were saying we were in the middle of an election year. As opposed to just the normal, we're always in the middle of an election something. Of course. This right. is this a is big like, one. This, this is where it's actually... This is a big one. The deadlines are starting to show up for when you have to file, you're going to run. Uh, everybody's gearing towards what's going to be happening in yes. the primaries and the general election come November. And, and so let's lay this out. You have the Senate, the U.S. Senate right now, which is controlled by Republicans with a, a majority of, is it 53... Uh, I'm going to, it uh, is. it's either 53 or 54. Um, Mike's looking it up right now because Michael find it. He cares it, about facts. <laughs> I do too. And I want to get this right. Cause this is what, <laughs> this is what matters. This piece is what matters. So we're in an election year where we've got the president that wants to stay in power, not just within the white house, but wants to maintain power in the Senate. Yeah. And what you have going on right well, now, just, I mean, you said the president, but the reality is you have a party. Yeah. That's, that's what I was going to say. So who, who, who's, who has the Senate and does that as their, and they, 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 they want to keep it. They want to pick up seats in the house. They want to yes. keep the Senate. Uh, they think it's critical to keep the Senate, uh, especially when you're thinking about, uh, article three judges, um, you know, the ability to confirm uh, judges in circuit courts. and um, You're an attorney, so I know that's what you care about the most, but that's well, okay. But that's a big thing. That's I've, a big thing, yeah, and, and that's where the Senate is really involved, and in the, in having the, the majority there really matters. So, Mike, you got our number? So look at the political map here. All right. Look at the, look at the political map, and then we're going to get to what you want to focus on. Okay, hurry with the political map. Political map shows there are vulnerabilities in— A couple of in, locations. Uh, uh, um, uh, just a couple of locations. And until recently, so the vulnerabilities were in Arizona. Um, Senator McSally was viewed as very vulnerable to the, uh, to, um, you know, the astronaut Kelly, uh, you know, who's running for that seat as a Democrat. Uh, and it's looking like she's probably going to get beat. In Colorado, you have Cory Gardner, who's against, Hickenlooper. against former governor, John Hickenlooper, former yep. presidential candidate, John Hickenlooper. He was a and lot cooler before he would not testify on ESA reform. <laughs> That's true. He, he's, uh, I'm still kind of mad at him about yeah. that. So am I. Um, but on the, so in Colorado and Cory Gardner is, you know, he, polling at about 30%. Last I checked, he was, he's really struggling in that state. Um, and those two states were viewed as, vulnerabilities. Uh, but they, the thought was, we, you know, we might lose those two states, but we're still, we're, we're, we're solid in these other places. We're probably going to still, as the Republicans still keep that majority. And then something happened in Montana. Take it, Nephi. <laughs> Steve Bullock's announcing he's running for Senate. And who's so Steve Governor Bullock? Bullock. So Governor Bullock is a, is a, the Democratic governor of Montana who just so happens to be the, as a statewide elected official, He's polls better than any other Democrat in the state. Um, How about the fact that he won re-election in a Trump at, as a Democrat in Montana for for governor the year? What was the percent? Trump got something like 64, 65 yeah. percent of the vote in Montana, and Bullock yeah. still won his race. Yeah, let's. I mean, let's let's compare that to Montana's senator Tester. Yeah, who could barely like basically can't win a plurality. Like the first time, did he? Yes. Did he the second time? I don't know, man. It was dicey. It was so close. I thought time, he did the second so, time. I mean, here's something to know about Montana. So that Senate race in 2018, the Montana Senate race, 
there was 600 yeah you're right there was six, there was 600 million it was the first time that that was the case in the, in 2018 the eighth most expensive senate rate in the race in the nation was in Montana yeah there's only a million people living in Montana the highest per capita spending of any election in the United States of America was Montana $120 per vote for the 500,000 people that, that voted and the difference in that election was 18,000 votes so why you know to give you some some perspective on that Ted Cruz versus Beto O'Rourke that was a 100 million dollar race it's not a whole lot more money there was $12 per vote spent on that race versus $120 per vote in Montana well why is that why on earth does a Senate race in Montana and and where does Mon- where do Montanans come up with that kind of money to spend on that race why on earth is that important well it's because it's not Montanans that are throwing in that money. Right. It's PACs that are throwing in that money. Right. And, that, and that'd be the case in... And in, a PAC is? A political action committee. So political action committee, for those that don't know, um, it's, a, it's a separate committee that picks a specific issue typically, they, and they are not allowed to coordinate with a the candidate. They're, they are political committees that can raise unlimited money, and they are not bound by individual contribution limits. So whereas you or I can't donate to one of the more than X amount of money to one of the Steves. If we have a pack, we can donate as much money as we want to that pack. Right. And that pack can come in and, and, you know, advertise as long as they're not coordinating with the candidate. They're great. They could spend whatever they want. And the money will flow in, in these packs into a state like Montana because of w- what I just said. That's right. It, it, that, Montana might be the difference between Republicans keeping yeah. or losing control of the Senate. And, and here's the reality. I mean, you just, I mean, you're right. What's going on is it doesn't matter. When, the, when these guys get to D.C., it, it no longer matters that Ted Cruz has 21 million people in, in his area and that Tester only has a million in his. What matters is it's one senator, one vote. One vote. So those people who, were, who care about these national level issues and are pushing these national political these these you know these larger operations to them money spent in montana and money spent in texas is the same it's the same thing if you get a senator yeah it will in it and it they can also focus their attention because so there's 100 senators in the united states senate right so to get to your numbers presently in this this um congress under 16 congress 53 republicans 45 democrats two independents who caucus with Democrats, right? Right. Yeah. The two independents, both caucus with Democrats. So essentially, that makes it uh, 53 47. Now, unlike the House of Representatives, which every two years, all 435 of them are up for election, only one third of the Senate is up. Because they, they have six year terms. So every, every two years, you got a third, two more years, another third, two more years, another third. Uh, so you are not having to throw money at 435 different people, you're only looking at 33 Senate races to, to pick and choose how this is going to happen. And, and depending on what the, the party makeup is, that can really influence on whether or not you're going to flip one direction or another. And you can look at a lot of states now and say, well, we don't need to throw any money at that because that seat is safe. Mm-hmm. There, are right. some, there are some seats in some states you just that... just don't have a viable that candidate. That ev- even if... And we can use Wyoming as a perfect example. And it's not just safe as in uh, we don't have to support that one because they, they are our political party. The other side can look at it and go, there's no way we're going to flip that. So Let's not waste our money Nobody's yeah. going to spend money there. Yeah. And it's, Wyoming's a great it's example. It's not a battle of, worth fighting. Right. Well, right. So Wyoming's a great so example you, you of that. you got your right? war, mm-hmm. right? You yeah. got the war for the NAF. The, the, the war is the effort to, for the Senate. The battles are happening at the individual state, and some battles you just aren't worth your, you know, they're not right. worth and, your blood and treasure. Right, and so that that the quick example I wanted to give was the Wyoming example, where we're actually going to have an open Senate seat. Mm-hmm. It, so it's it, you know, in theory, in a lot of places, an open Senate seat would bring people out from Democrats and Republicans alike, and money would flow in. Mm-hmm. But in this particular instance, you already know because of the political makeup of the state that whomever. Runs, Cynthia Lummis is going to be a great senator. <laughs> that whomever, whomever runs from the uh, from the Republican side is because you, Wyoming is unique in having sixty percent of its voting population really, you know, with one particular party, the Republican Party, right? Party. So it's got to be a significant shift to get 
something different right. than that that majority vote. Right. Yeah, and, Montana, and so no money's going to flow in there. Now people would have argued and, and money that Montana might not have was safe. Yeah, my, Montana until a couple of weeks ago, money probably wasn't going to yeah. flow into Montana either because Steve Bullock was on the re- on record he multiple was times. For he had he was, he'd run for president and then yeah. he suspended that campaign and then people asked him, well, are you going to run against Senator Daines for he that Senate no. seat? And he said no repeatedly. He said, how many, t- how many different ways can I tell you no? Uh, and he said, no, 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 no. And so uh, on the national level, that seat was looked at as pretty safe. And, you know, and then all of a sudden, within the past couple of weeks, there were mumblings that, that he yeah. might be changing course that some of the, the political powers in the Democratic Party maybe got to him and convinced him that for the good of party and good of country, he he should run for that seat in Montana. And once that happens, so I think you get a tweet. Oh, I was going to get to that. <laughs> that the person who you should credit if we get permanent funding for LWCF is Steve Bullock. Even if he doesn't <laughs> do it, even if he doesn't become senator... Because his announcement, there were his you know, the, Steve. I mean, he, the fact that he's running against Danes, that is, that was the impetus. That was the push that let everybody know, like, okay, what what issues are important to Montanans? And so, so what happened? Well, how do you think that the the rumblings translated into actual action? Rumblings of what? Uh, of Steve Bullock's uh, announcement for his campaign. So explain the part where he, how, how does it make its way to the Twitter sphere? How does, which makes its way? Donald well, Trump or Steve? So, so Bullock, I think it's safe to say that uh, people, Bullock might not have been sold on running for the Senate. And he today may still be like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Be- and he's going to have to, because he was running for president and running for president. That's an entirely different machine than running for the Senate. And mm-hmm. so he's going to have a ton of work to do to be competitive in Montana. But people within his party came to him and they were doing the polling and they had the numbers and they said, look, if we want to open up of a front of battle in Montana, we need the person to do it. You're our guy. You're our guy. And he got pushed from, we know he got pushed from Obama. Mm-hmm. We know he got pushed from Schumer. We know like he any, probably got pushed from any, any, de- any Democrat with any street cred. They wanted him and him. they, they, they are behind him and they're asking him to do this. Why? Because as we said before, the Senate may, he could hinge, be the guy hinge on Montana. Yes. And, and more money will be spent per capita on the election in Montana than any other Senate election in this country, without a doubt. Yes. And he has a track record of being able to compete with Republicans in his own state yep. in presidential election years. And so he's and what, a very viable candidate. And so and you know what else makes this fascinating? You know, they, the, the group, one of the key flip groups that they're looking at, trying to, like, the, 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 the group they're speaking to, sportsmen. The right. polling in Montana says that those sportsmen and sportsmen's groups who are kind of who are kind of running down the pragmatic center can be tugged either way. That which is, is why which is why you get this tweet. I am calling on Congress to send me a bill that will fully and permanently fund the land and water conservation fund and restores our national parks. When I sign it into law, it will be historic for our beautiful public lands. That tweet came well, no, from... Well, more to it. So here... So oh, you have the rest of it? What's the rest of it? All thanks, capital all, Oh, yeah. All thanks to at Sen Corey Gardner and at Steve Daines, two great conservative leaders. So here's something to... Let's go back and talk about 2018 very briefly. In 2018, the difference in that Montana Senate between... Um, was, it Ros- it was Rosendale and Tester? Mm-hmm. It was 18,000 votes. There are some people who would say that those 18,000 votes, like th- that it was the sportsman's vote. Let's just say in Montana, the sportsman's vote matters. Yeah. There's a reason this tweet came out. And if it, if it My- had not been, if it had just been, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hypothesize here. If it had just been Cory Gardner, Senator Gardner, going to President Trump and saying, I'm in a battle here. 
I need land and water conservation fund. It's an important issue to my state. I need it uh, for my reelection. I suspect that that President Trump would have looked at the numbers in Colorado and thought, eh, you know, I don't like your chances, even with you know me asking for this bill. Um, but when he hooked up with uh, one Steve Daines um, in what could be a very tightly contested race, now the calculus in, in like we said, in what could be the pivotal state, the calculus on endorsing a land and water conservation fund permanent funding becomes a lot different from the office of the president. Now, somebody uh, before, and one thing I want to do quickly is let's not discount what Steve Daines did and not give him a slap on the back because maybe it, Steve Daines realized that this was his opportunity to get LWCF, r- you know, roaring. Perhaps. Either way. Sure. You know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. I mean, sometimes in, in politics, we want all politicians to do the right things for the right reasons. And sometimes we don't know why they did things, but we're hoping they did the right thing. A lot of times in reason. politics, it's timing. Timing matters so much. Um, and you might want something and it might take years and years and years. And then the stars align perfectly and you've got to strike while that iron is hot. Uh, when yeah. the stars align and the stars when the, came into alignment. When your crop mm-hmm. when, when, when opportunity and preparation meet, you best pull the trigger. Right. So there's, yeah, that's why uh, Senator Manchin, Democrat from West Virginia, said, politics be damned, let's get this done. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't care. He's like, all right, let's get it done. Right, and there are a lot of people that are saying, a lot of senators saying something, you know, similar hey, things. Here's They're, the most exciting thing. Pushing I, for this for a long time, and the stars started to align and mm-hmm. say, you know, all right, let's, let's saddle up and do this thing. To me, the exciting thing about this in Montana, that the Senator Danes recognized the value of LWCF and these public lands issues in Montana. And Governor Bullock is also to be competitive. He's going to have to do the exact same thing. He's going to have to recognize what issues are important to sportsmen. And he's going to have to, he's going to have to be competitive on those issues. Is it pretty amazing to you? So this is amazing to me. And I think we should sit back and kind of appreciate this moment in time because we may have the controlling party in the Senate come down to who has the best sportsman cred. Who has like, the most, the biggest, the best pitch to our, to it, our community. Like, like for the first time since in my memory, the sportsman's vote may actually wind up being the difference maker in what party controls the Senate. Yeah. It's for the next two there, years. There's no doubt. Yeah, could be. And that's why if you're, if you're in Montana and you're a sportsman, I, <laughs> I've said this on a tweet, get your helmet on. And get your BS meter ready, because this one is this. It's gonna get Western in Montana, and sportsmen, I believe, are gonna they're gonna be ex, they're gonna be critical. They're gonna be absolutely critical, and I think everybody recognizes it. And so, if you're in a sportsman's group in Montana, there's no doubt that people are gonna be pushing groups to take a political side. Oh, on getting this. that endorsement. Yeah. That endorsement from groups. They're going to be trying to get that endorsement. Which from, most won't be able to give. We yeah. should be clear. Most of those groups, because they're... Um, They'd they're, like to be nonpartisan or Well, or and, and most of them have to be. Most of them are, are uh, 501c3 yes. nonprofits that they can't, they can't yeah. endorse but candidates. But if, if, if you're an individual who has a pulpit and some cred in Montana, these people are going to be reaching out to you. And so, I mean, you, you better have your, your compass on straight. Because this is going to be impactful. It's going to be very impactful. I'm just, I'm, I'm really excited, you know, that, that Montana has become so important and the sportsman's voice in Montana, therefore, has become so important that it has led the president of the United States to say, get me a land and water conservation yeah. fund bill. Well, and, he, I mean, and that's he, a, that's I'm excited too. And here's deal. why, because it's not just the land and water, it's, it's sportsman's issues. Right. And, right. And this is what sportsmen, we've needed to do this for a long time. We got to quit. Wait, we got to quit saying like, you know what I'm going to do? I have to choose between lands and guns. I have to choose between this or that. I have to choose between one party that doesn't really do it for me and another party that doesn't really do it for me. This could actually be the moment where sportsmen can say, no, you got to be good on all my issues. These are the issues that are important to us as sportsmen. You got to be good on our issues. We're not kowtowing to party. 
we are the constituency. You got to, you got to be good on earn us, earn us. Yeah. And gosh, what a cool, I mean, that's the way politics is supposed to be. It's, it's exciting. Oh, it, I mean, it's super exciting. So let's talk, let's talk about the next few months then. Um, so we've got, we've got this bill that's been out there for a year. Right? Now has the energy of the, the presidency behind it saying, get this thing done, you know, getting it some momentum. Um, what do we think? And, and, and just so we're clear, there's an accompanying house bill that was introduced around the same time a year ago that has, um, I've got the co-sponsor list here. It had two, has 232 co-sponsors in the house. Um, one thing we haven't talked about that we should mention is this is part of a package. So we've, we're talking about LWCF, but there's actually you know, one of the big issues, uh, other big issues has been the maintenance backlog in the national parks. And one of the things this, um, this proposal would do, so it would fully fund, it would permanently fund the Land and Water Conservation Fund at the $900 million, but it would also fund uh, one, was it $1.2 billion of, of park maintenance backlog. Uh, so this is a, this is a two, $2 billion package for our parks and outdoor recreation. I mean, that's a, that's a big number when you think about what traditionally is appropriated to these sorts of things. Uh, or, or the, so, so that's a big deal. I just wanted to lay that out there so we're not ignoring the other piece of this bill. Well, let's, let's talk about this. Um, pull your crystal ball out. What, is, what do you guys think the likelihood of this bill becoming law is? Mike. What do you think? Well, you rose, you just raised your yeah, hand. I saw you raised your hand too. You <laughs> raised your hand to call on somebody else. I don't have. I can't even say yeah. what the percentage because here to me, here's the thing. I think it passes out of the Senate. I do too. But you yeah, know, it's going to be. Here's here's the funny part, and the disappointing part for all of you, who like who like. Here's the political part. There's a very real chance that the House, which is under a different party's control, may not want to see it pass. For the for the for political reasons, just like one party wants to see it pass for potentially political reasons, there's a very real political calculus going on in the House of Representatives leadership that's going to go like, "Well, can we really afford to give the Republicans a win?" Do you, how do you think that would play though as a Democrat? Because in my Gosh, mind, I that would give poorly. that would give Republicans an awful lot of ammunition to say, "You wanted this for so long." We we handed it but, to you on a silver platter, and now you're saying you don't want it? Yeah, but this hasn't been the same sort of litmus test type of vote or issue as, say, um, other issues that we've seen around you know, abortion rights, gun control, union issues, things like that. That, that, that are the, divisive. Yeah, this one's more been divisive. very bipartisan all along. Yeah, so in, in, in either way, it hasn't been one that is that is like... I'm going to champion this and this is my own party and that's what I have to do. And so it, it's doesn't, it, it may be one that they can afford to not pass in the house and just say, well, we'll take it up next time. Yep. And that's the funny part is like, really, if you think about it where, you know, you, because of the year it is and the pressure it is in the Senate, we might have gotten that perfect, that, that coordination of the opportunity and, and the preparation may occur there. Well, that timeline is not necessarily the same in the house because so, they're not they're not feeling the same pressure. They're not seeing the same issues. There's no mm -hmm. there's no there's no political expediency there's no there. There's no one seat to flip it. No kind of uh, and so now pressure. and so if they bring it up, I mean now like one of the exciting things is you may actually get to see people vote based on what they actually could be. Believe. And do you, and do you think that if it passes the Senate, uh, that that gives the talking point that a Cory Gardner, um, you know, Senator Gardner and a Senator Danes yes, needs. It mm -hmm. does. Because they they were the impetus for getting the yep. the final push to get it across the finish line in which the Senate. Is, which is and why so they don't really need it to pass the House to get the the political win. So so right? that, that's one thing that, that always sort that's of That's my question, I guess. I, you're it, right. it, it is. It is a talking point that he can go on the campaign trail and say, We passed such and such. And that's why I usually harp on the idea of the difference between passing one house being different than being made law. Because a lot of times people get, whether it's a fundraiser for some special interest group or it's an individual saying, 
this thing happen and it's great or this thing is terrible, it's about to happen. It is spoken about as if it's the final say. If there are it people... really isn't, right? And so, so he could go out and he could campaign and say, yep, yeah, we passed that, I did all these great things. But the reality is if the House doesn't, doesn't approve it, if this president doesn't sign it, that vote means nothing in, and in the next you, Congress. And Governor Bullock could jump all over that, mm-hmm. right, in his campaign of saying, all right, you got that far, but, but you didn't really you get it across, get it across the finish, the finish line. line. But yeah. the other thing is you're going to see the – if you're going to see the argument against that, Danes is going to be able to make, is going to be able to say like, I wanted to pass this and look at your party. Your party wouldn't pass it. I couldn't get it through the House. And so it does stay a political football. Maybe, although it could also be the House, you know, the House, you could say, well, we have, you know, 200 and something Democratic co-sponsors and 19 Republican co-sponsors. Come on, Senator Danes, do some, do, yeah. do some handshaking is, with this, some of your colleagues on the other side of the aisle and help us get it across. This is where, like, politics start to get ugly and dirty because then it becomes, like, you have all these excuses that will now come up and they're all just, they're nothing but excuses. Yeah. All these excuses, they're all political excuses and political arguments that really don't, if you're really talking about doing the good work, like all these things are relevant. It'll just be somebody's talking points for why they decided to do what they were doing for some other reason. But but let's just, also be honest. It's it's pretty exciting that we're right at the cusp of, of this as well. Well, I mean, the exciting a, part is I would think that the best way for to have this not be a weapon used against you to bludgeon you is to make sure it gets to the house too. And, right, and for those both you, parties can take credit. Yeah, and if you, if, if for those of you who want to write a letter right now, go, please go do it. And the person to write the letter to is not in the Senate. It's the house. It's to reach out to the, it's to reach out to your, your constituency in the house of representatives and say, when this comes over from the Senate, please, please act on it. Please do not put it on the back burner, please. Cause you know, we may not get this chance again. And too often that happens with great legislation where you'll have people really do hard work on things like ESA reform and get those things down and get them almost there and get them through one side or the other. And then you have, you know, then, then it gets political. It's unfortunate. Well, yeah. And w- one other thing you can do, if you're curious about, you know, who, who supports some bill, you know, and you want to go on the House site, go to congress.gov. Mm-hmm. Go into congress.gov, and you can type in Land and Water Conservation Fund Permanent Funding Act, and it'll pull up the bill. It'll pull up – you can get the text of the bill. You can get committee reports of the bill. You can get the, all the list of sponsors and co-sponsors broken down by state, you know, all, all, where it is in the process, the different actions that have been taken on the bill. You know, so, so as you're thinking about who to write to, yeah, you know, that could be something too. You can you can distill who hasn't co-sponsored this, for example. Like if you're looking for trying to get other co-sponsors on board, go to go to congress.gov. Um, there's just a wealth of information out there and up to the date, up to the minute uh, information about the status of bills and and who's supporting bills, you know, who's co-sponsoring. And just and actually, it's worth noting, just because somebody co-sponsors a bill doesn't actually mean they'll end up voting for it in the end. Uh, because you have the all the amendment processes and everything that mm-hmm. occur, so you, you know, but it gives you a leg up of saying conceptually who likes the idea. Uh, so that I don't know if you uh, would agree. That's just a plug I'd put in. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, any other thoughts on this before we before we call it a night? Other than the fact we got time sent to his destination. Oh, I think we did. Maybe even back home. He's just sitting in his driveway listening to this right now. His kids are yelling at him, Dad, I'm missing a soccer game. I got to get to soccer. Yeah. Uh, He's like, no, just a second. I'm listening to your mountain guys, and they're awesome. That's right. That's what he says. (laughs) I know that's what he says. It's got to be what he says. And hopefully that's what all of you say that are listening. Uh, And if you do say that, get out there uh, wherever you get this podcast especially if you're getting it from iTunes, go out there and leave us a rating, uh, five star, preferably, uh, please, you know, let us know how we're doing. Email us at your mountain at it's your mountain.com. Give us any feedback you've got ideas you've got, you know, we'll, we'll take it all. Um, go out to our social media pages all at, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, all at the handle at it's your mountain. And of course our website is it's your mountain.com. Do all that stuff. Stay in touch with us. Uh, follow this. Be thrilled that the sportsman's voice may determine the outcome 
of uh, the major who has the majority party in the Senate this fall. Uh, and in the meantime, remember that life is about experiences, so go have one.